the nature of Texas Scholarship has not changed because at the end of the day the purpose is the same. It's always to uh, account for this transmission, account for the variation and for a public. Okay, but it has changed the way we work and the way we think about it. We don't work in the same way, we don't work on paper, we don't work uh, uh, necessarily all the time going to library and see this material. We work in our, com in our room with computers, we uh, make statistics out of them, we encode them, so the methodology work has changed. It also has changed the way we think about it. We think outside the page borders, therefore we think about process, about um, methods more than we did before, I think. I always say that a digital test of scholarship is like in a Darwinian process, we jumped a few steps so very quickly, but we're in the same Darwinian process we were before, so the same evolution of the discipline. The discipline is the same. We have started to explore better the steps, intermediate steps of transmissions and valorize them in their own account. We have started to understand that a variation on the text is not a bug, is a feature of the text and try to understand in which way also these variants, these differences have impacted the transmission and the understanding of the text. So, so it changes the way we deliver it. We don't deliver one monolithic text that is the reading text with a critical apparatus. We may decide to deliver that plus all the witnesses, plus all the facsimile, plus tools to explore that. So we have now the possibility of changing the delivery and in this way to improve the understanding about what a text and textuality means in time, in time and in places. The things that excites me the most is really to think about models. How we model what we know about text, how we model texts, how we model how editorial work and the products we produce the theoretical assumptions uh, that are behind uh, the work we do and sometimes we don't think about it. I don't think that digital has given us the distance uh, uh, necessary to understand better the process of uh, writing and producing printed books or written books because it takes another medium to reflect it on a previous medium and this possibility of looking from uh, above or over the work that's been done before so it really gives me uh, excitement because I do find that I can see better than I used to do before. Before when you are immersed in and you don't think out the box because that is your box. It's, it's, uh, it's just the way you do things. But then when you start to think uh, out of the page, you start to wonder why you do what you do and how you know what you know. And this is the things that, you know, the modeling and the theoretical bit is the things that excite me the most. When you look at the document, there is lots of words there, and maybe there is more than words. There is spaces, there is dots, there is uh, jotted of ink, uh, and there is a uh, dead fly or a hole. And you start, first of all, as, a, as an editor to ask which of those things that I see are relevant to me. The moment you select the feature on a page that are relevant for you, for your work, for your scholarship, then you build a model of the page, which is always something smaller than the real object that contains the features that for your scholarship are relevant and you will use it to build meaning out of that. So that's what I mean by modeling a text. That's an example, but for instance, for editing, what does it mean modeling editing? It means to ask, what do you do as an editor in, in which steps? So for instance, that selecting features, that's one of the activity you do. Another is organizing those features, organizing according to a point of view, according to a readership, according to a theory, or in any other way you think. And then when you organize them, you present them. So all these steps on the heuristics as well of the editing, you can build as a model, as an algorithm if you want. And once you have drawn that into details, you can use to build software and tools and things that support your work. 
Those are essential activities you have to do before you're able to create any of the digital resources, maybe a website or a tool for helping other people to do their work. I do think that's what we have to do. And I do think that if we don't do it ourselves, and by ourselves, I mean we text scholars, we editors, someone else will do it for us, perhaps Google. We'll edit, we'll take the text that they think is important to transmit to the next generation. That's why we, we editors, text scholars, we know our content. We are the one that can tell what's worth it and how to take it to the next generation. So, Absolutely, we have to engage with this activity as much as we can. We cannot leave it undone because what we have not done either will not be done at all or will be done by people that don't understand it with dreadful consequences on, on the future we have, our textual futures in our hands now. Because there's no doubt that what will not be digitized, what will not be uh, taken into the computer in a way that is intelligent and uh, thoughtful will not be, will be probably lost within a few generations, if not lost, imperfectly understood and uh, misrepresented.